This season's conclusion brought some great story moments, but also more questions. Savathun tells us we already have what we need to enter the portal, and Ikora says we just have to figure out what shape it took. Today we're going to speculate with what we've got. Why wouldn't Savathun just straight up help? She wants the same thing we do, so why isn't this pattern revealed to us? Is this connected straight to the final shape? Are the Ahamkara and the 15th Wish involved? Let's discuss. If you haven't played this week's conclusion, this video has everything you need to know if you want to click on that one before this, but make sure you come back. Otherwise, here's a small recap. In the final cutscene, Savathun gets brought back by Umaru, and Eris kills her to gather all the tithes she's ever had to cut Zivu Arath off from her throne world. Zivu is now mortal, so if we find her and kill her, she's dead, no need to fight her in that throne world. Amaru reses Savathun once more and she makes a deal with the Vanguard. She gets to walk free and the Vanguard will keep Amaru. In case she gets any crazy ideas, we can just crush him. When Ikora asks Savathun to tell us how to enter the portal, she says this. Tell us how to follow the witness. Tell you, Savathun frowned, her voice edged with disappointment. I already showed you. So what can change forms in destiny? We have to figure out what form something took. Let's go through a couple of options. First up, Savathun changed forms when she took places with Osiris. She sort of possessed his body and shapeshifted herself. But to me, this doesn't really fit with what Ikora says, figure out what form it's taken. Well, if it's Savathun, she was just right in front of us, now she's walking away. What about the veil? Savathun hid the veil on Neptune and kind of showed it to us, leading us to Neomuna. But to my knowledge, the thing hasn't changed at all and is still sitting in veil containment. It hasn't shifted or taken a different form. Now to the more popular theory we're seeing everywhere, of course. As we complete this week's events, we get the final major arcana card, which happens to be called The Wish. Eris made a column of the remaining cards. At the bottom, The Witch. Above that, The Truth. Then Lament. Then The Wish. Who was The Witch? Savathun or herself? The thought gave her pause. From whom did the truth flow? There were too many truths for any one to triumph, but lament she knew, the slaying of Oryx, Zivu Arath's greatest loss. Would the truth lead to another Hive sibling's death? Eris looked to the last card. The wish puzzled her. A wish is desire, the greatest power in this universe. Eris had wished before, and it led her here. Would she be asked to wish again? What else would her desire rot? Turning away, Eris left the cards on the table and took her questions with her. So in that ex Deerus card, we see the order Eris pulls these cards. The Witch, the Truth, Lament, the Wish. The Witch likely Savathun, the Truth, then Lament, which she discusses could be killing another Hive God, which she does at the end of this season in Savathun for a brief moment, and then a Wish, Will There Be a Wish? This of course leads us to one of the most popular theories, the Ahamkara Wish Dragons. Eris pulled the wish. Who grants wishes? Ahamkara. Another great hint, Ahamkara are literally shape-shifting dragons, things that can take different forms. There, Lysel and Sedia augured the first borehole with the help of Riven, who had taken the shape of a needle-nosed basilisk. When it came time to connect the well to the unreality that lay beyond the gateway, Sidia asked, Would it not be wiser to leave this door without a key? Riven, now an immense antlered serpent with broad tiger paws, tightened around the perimeter of the room like a noose. From the Hidden Dossier Ahamkara believed that by transforming themselves, by metamorphosing from monsters into treasures, they become more real, more important ontologically. It is the gap between reality as is and reality as desired that they feed on, a rock. And guardians are the richest, finest source of reality as desired that they have ever met. 
When we think of Ahamkara, we first turn to the last known one, which happened to be Riven. We do have Riven's heart, or someone does, I'm assuming maybe Mara, could that be used somehow? Riven was the last known, but do others exist? Has Savathun had one in her claws this whole time? Imagine if most of her tricks had been caused by this said creature. So we had Riven and also many of the eggs scattered across the Dreaming City, but they were corrupted and most of them destroyed. But it's also worth noting that Ahamkaras transcend death. Even if you found Ahamkara bones, you can still make a wish to them. Eris's rock is an Ahamkara bone itself. Riven, the last known Ahamkara. A creature of immense power and cunning. The Guardians killed Riven and ripped out her heart. But Ahamkara transcend death. They can transform desire into reality, even when they are nothing but bone and dust. Savathun does have connections to Ahamkara. She made a wish to Riven back after Oryx's death. In her throne world, she had an Ahamkara illusion, which she showed to us. Maybe that's what she was talking about. Although we don't really know how that illusion happened. It could have just been another one of those tricks, but interesting nonetheless. Sabathun, like Ahamkara, also feed on trickery, so it makes sense that these two would have some connections. At times, she also spoke like the Ahamkara did, but so did other characters like Kallus. This will be our last talk until the day of the ritual, O Guardian Mind. So that's all interesting, but we don't have any solid evidence that Savathun had an Ahamkara in her possession at all. During this week, she tells us she's already showed us the key to solving this portal puzzle. And Ikora says we just have to figure out what shape it took. We need to keep our attention on that portal. She gave us the secret to breaching it. Now, we just need to discover what form it's taken. We have more terminal entries left this season, so maybe they'll explain what the heck is going on. But that's what we know for now. It is kind of frustrating that Sabathun wants the same thing we do, you know, the witness dead, yet she's still playing her games and won't reveal how to enter the portal straight up. Maybe she still has some agenda with this heirloom or item she's keeping hidden from us. During Season of the Lost, Mara and Sabathun made a deal. Free Sabathun from her worm and we get Osiris back. But was there more to it? Found in Marasav's chamber was of course a corrupted Ahamkara egg. It was never used during the season, it could have just been there for environmental purposes as a prop, but if it is part of the story, clearly she was inspecting it. Why have it there in the first place? Mara also has an object called Riga's Crown in her possession, which is still a mystery. Agar's Scepter and Riga's Crown were explained in Season of the Lost. In the story, there were two things, Riga's Crown and Agar's Scepter created for the siblings. The scepter is actually a gun and not a staff, so Riga's crown may not actually be a crown at all. Maybe it's this egg or some type of awoken weapon. There is truth in this tale. The scepter and crown, they are real. One I already have. The other, you will retrieve for me. During this current season, Savathun had many contingency plans if things went different ways. The one involving Mara brought up some questions though. In that plan, Imaru and the Lucent Brood had an heirloom in their possession, and she theorized the Guardians would try to take it if they found the pattern. This heirloom seems to be connected to the plan, and we assume Sabathun still has it somewhere unless the plans have changed. Some things involving Savathun still seem fishy. She gets brought back, but she wants the Vanguard to let her go. She doesn't care if they have Amaru, her ghost and connection to the light. 
We both had the same goal in stopping the witness, but instead of staying here and helping us achieve that, she wants to go and do something else. And maybe this heirloom is at the center of it. If it was something like an Amkar, that would be super important for her. If Amaru died, maybe she can just make wishes and make herself more powerful some other way. Remnants of Savathun's actual scheme may be found in the hidden dossier as well. We always believed the Dreaming City plan for her was to use Riven's wish to protect the curse, keep it going, and find a way to enter the distributary to gain unlimited amounts of power. Ikora says, What if this is a misunderstanding? Why would the Dreaming City tell Savathun how to enter the distributary? The Awoken have never tried to return to their birthplace. They believe their exodus was irreversible. But what have the Awoken done instead? Passed from the distributary and into our world. The knowledge is in the Dreaming City, in the records of the Awoken halls that carried Mara's people on their exodus. What Savathun wants in the Dreaming City is exactly that. Not the way into a child universe, but a way out into a parent. A parent where there are human minds waiting to receive her, formless as Imbaru, as the mist. So that could be big what Ikora theorized. Savathun may not want to find a pocket dimension like the distributary at all, rather the secrets to enter the parent universe which could be the Pale Heart Realm. What would be the plan once there? Not sure, maybe something like Imbaru to generate unlimited power, although she is with the light now, so there's many different options, I guess. Savathun wanted to hide the veil during the collapse, possibly for this reason, to maybe gain power for herself and her siblings at the time. If all of this is true, though, the Ahamkara aspect of this, the only logical conclusion is that we, or maybe Eris, would make a wish. Would this 15th wish help us enter the portal or help us learn how to enter? We know that's the current goal and maybe that's what next season would involve. When Ikora says, figure out what shape it took, is she talking about an Ahamkara itself shape-shifting or maybe a wish that was made by Savathun? Maybe the wish she made long ago, the one to Riven that set all of this in motion. Anyway, Guardians, that's all we got for today's video. What are your thoughts on the ending of Season of the Witch and where is it going to lead? What is this heirloom or object we have to figure out what form it's taken? And what do you think Savathun's up to now that she's roaming free once more? If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.